Welcome to Nucleic Acids Part 1. We'll have a brief introduction and we'll look at nucleotides, the basic building block of nucleic acids. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, as you may or may not already know, DNA is deoxy, um, I don't know why I'm going to, ribose, there we go, nucleic acid. All right, so DNA. And then, of course, RNA is ribonucleic acid. Okay, all righty. So um, they, they work together. They have similar functions. Let's make sure that we understand the functions, right? So basically, um, DNA is the library. It stores instructions um, for making proteins, right? And when we hear the word protein, while proteins have many functions, um, we're going to really think about their role, right, as enzymes. Um, you know, so protein, they, proteins have more roles than that, but I think that's a key place to be looking because the, um, the enzymes that are activated within a cell give it its personality and character. Now the RNA, it works in conjunction with the ribosomes um, to um, direct the assembly of the amino acids. Okay, can't let my writing catch up with my words, right? So the RNA with the ribosomes will, um, works to direct the assembly of amino acids. Okay, and remember we'll just start using AA for amino acids, um, right? To create the primary structure of proteins. Okay, so the DNA holds the recipe but the RNA is the one that actually um, works with the ribosomes to, to build the proteins. So um, the ribosomes, um, right, those are the cellular structures located in the cytosol where polypeptides are synthesized. So nothing too new there. Um, so it just helps us know where they are, right? Located in the cytosol. Um, right, where, and we call them, remember the language of proteins, right? We call them polypeptides at this point. We don't call them proteins yet because they need to have their secondary, tertiary, and possibly quaternary structure created before they um, assume a biological function. So, um, so it's interesting though, because I always thought like every cell had DNA, but it turns out, right, when a red blood cell um, is produced, as soon as it matures, it, it kicks out its DNA to make room for more hemoglobin. So it actually has no nucleus, no DNA, and is not able to divide. Um, it's interesting, they um, produce, they also don't have mitochondria. So all of their energy is produced from glycolysis. And when you hear the word glycolysis, right, you think about glucose going to two pyruvates. Okay, oh, and that's right here, right? Glucose going to two pyruvate molecules. All right, and then uh, mitochondria, it's hard to imagine cells without mitochondria, right? Because all kinds of important stuff happens there. We've got the citric, citric acid cycle, the electron transport chain, and oxidative phosphorylation. So um, there we go. Okay, so now let's look more closely. So there's our introduction. So now let's look more closely at the basic building blocks. So those are described as nucleotides. So the nucleotides for DNA and RNA um, have many similarities, so let's, um, let's learn about them, All right? So building blocks of DNA and 
Arnie. Okay. All righty. Well, we'll, we'll start with a very simple structure, generic structure. So ribose is a five-carbon sugar. So we can use a pentagram to represent the ribose or the deoxyribose. And then there will be a nitrogenous base. And we, you know, we've learned about amines, and so we recognize it, right? And it will be, so it's a nitrogen-containing rings. And so these bases are very fancy. They're a ring structure. Um, the sugar is, the, the sugars will differ in this position right here. They'll either be ribose or deoxyribose. And you can imagine what, the, right? So the deoxy, we have a loss of OH. Okay? And then the last component is the phosphate group. Right? PI or P1. And there's our phosphate, which we've come to recognize. Okay, so each nucleotide has these three components. Um, the nitrogenous base, and the sugar are often talked about by themselves. And in this case, we call them a nucleoside. However, when we take the nucleoside and also add the phosphate group, then for me that helps the tide, nucleotide, right? Think about the total, right? All three components. Alrighty, um, so there is the basic structure of nucleotides, and now we'll look um, a little more closely at each component by itself. We'll start with the sugar, since it's in the center, and we can see um, ribose and deoxyribose. So the first thing we want to look for is that, that position here that we see, right, the loss, right? loss of OH, and now this, we've practiced our sugar, so here's the Hayworth, so we should be able to go back and forth. So if we find um, this hydroxy group on the fissure, right, pay attention, there's our anomeric carbon, which would be right there. So we would recognize this is the carbon two position, and we see with deoxyribose, we have the loss of the OH. Alrighty. Now the numbering of the sugars, because we have um, three components, the sugar numbers are assigned a prime. So of course the anomeric carbon gets the lowest possible number and um, then the other carbons just get numbered from there. Alrighty. So um, it's great to start with the, the sugar because it's at the center. And so we notice that the nitrogenous base, right, bonds, right, at, at off of carbon one. So attaches or bonds, and we'll call those one prime. And then, of course, the phosphate group, right, bonds at um, carbon five prime. Alrighty, okay. So now let's build out and look more closely at the nitrogenous base and the, um, the phosphate group. So on the next page, we'll look at the nitrogen base or the nitrogenous base. And we see that there are two um, basic forms. Um, so the nitrogenous bases are either derivatives of purine or pyrimidine. All right, so notice the ring structure with the heteronitrogens. And to me, for some reason, the purine looks a bit like a cat, right? Like that would be the nose of the cat. Just needs a little tail and cats purr. So that helped me sort out that the purine was the two-ringed, the fused-ringed structure. That helps you great. If not, um, hopefully you'll have a, a more clever way to think of it. You can share it with me. Alrighty. 
So we'll first we'll look at the DNA bases. So um, we'll go ahead and fill these in. So there's a bunch of double bonds missing. And then of course hydrogen always, excuse me, nitrogen always wants three bonds. So any place that there are three bonds missing, we're going to add a hydrogen. So this first purine derivative is adenine. And it gets symbolized with an A. And then the second purine um, has the amide. And then we see some more amines coming off. Quite a few more double bonds. And then there's a hydrogen. So this is guanine. And we symbolize that with a G. And now we'll look at the pyrimidine derivatives. The first one, cytosine, also has an amide feature. And there's a hydrogen there. So here is cytosine. And we'll symbolize that with a C. And then we have thiamine. So also has that amide feature, a couple of them. And then it has a methyl group coming off. And so this is thiamine. And that's symbolized with a T. OK. Now, for the nitrogenous bases, they are all the same. All right, so we won't go through it. So adenine's the same. Guanine's the same. You can practice filling those in yourself. And the cytosine's the same. But there is no thiamine. It's uracil. OK, so let's focus on the differences between thiamine and uracil. So it's almost identical, except it's, there's, there's, it's a hydrogen, right? So up here, this is a methyl group. And here, it's a hydrogen. So there is a one methyl group difference between the two. OK, so otherwise, everything's the same. OK, so now let's go to the, um, the phosphate group. And that'll finish up our, our, the basic components of our nucleotides, which then will link together to form the nucleic acids. All righty, so here we see our sugar, right? One prime, two prime. 3 prime, 4 prime, 5 prime. So we see the nitrogenous base, here a pyrimidine coming in at um, the 1 prime carbon. And then we have our phosphate. So let's go ahead, put an arrow to the bond that links the ribose to the phosphate group. Right? So we know the linkage is here at the oxygen. Right? So remember, that really we could just think of this as a very fancy alcohol and that the, the phosphate ester bond is right there, right? Just like we would with the carbonyl, right? Think about the phosphorus just like you would a carbonyl atom. So that is um, the linkage. And what type is it, right? It's a phosphoester bond. All righty. Um, oh, OK. So there are tons of nucleotides out there. So in this chapter, we're going to focus on DNA and RNA. But it's important if you look back at some of the compounds that we've studied, right? AMP, AD, oops, ADP, uh, um, ATP, those are all, they're also nucleotides, as well as FAD and NAD+. So this is a, a, a common um, structure that we see through a variety of biological molecules. So let's practice constructing a nucleotide. Alrighty, so we're going to have phosphate, adenine, and deoxyribose. 
Now, um, in my class, I would never expect you to memorize these. I would give you the components, but you should be able to put them together. All righty. So, the sugar, right, goes in the center. There's our buddy ribose. And then this is deoxyribose, so we know that we have hydrogens here. And then we can remember this, the ribose structure there, right? So this all comes from ribose. And now we will do the linkage to, right, from one prime we go to the nitrogenous base. And notice that it's got to be one of the nitrogens. If we look back, right, this nitrogen had a hydrogen before, right? So we substitute the R group for where the hydrogen was. And then we can just fill in the rest right here. There's an amine coming off. There we are. Okay. So we've linked the nitrogenous base through the one prime carbon. There's our two prime, three prime, four prime, and five prime. And then the phosphate group links here, right? So there's the phosphoester bond. And then, of course, this is at physiological pH, so we show this ionized. Okay, so that's about as hard as it gets, would be to assemble a nucleotide from its three components, the, the five-carbon sugar, the nitrogenous base, and the phosphate group. Alrighty, so now would be a great time to um, work on a few homework problems to reinforce your understanding of the basic structure of nucleotides.